Hello, today we're going to go over using the T-Bird 5800 and today's video is going to be on utilizing and setting up the 5800 for a layer 2 Ethernet traffic test. So to first begin setting up a test we need to click on the test button up in the top left hand corner here. This will then bring us to this view. If you do not see this select test view and quite possibly you may see this results screen view. In order to get back to select test, you just need to move to the top left hand corner, click on select test. Once you've done that, you can then move down to Ethernet. Within Ethernet, you can now see that we are displayed all the different Ethernet interfaces our test set supports, that being 10, 100, 1000, 100 meg optical, 1 gig optical, 10 gig LAN, and 10 gig WAN. For today's demonstration, let's choose 1 gig optical. Once you've chosen 1 gig optical, you can now see that you can test at layer 2 and layer 3, and also layer 4 for TCP testing. Today we're going to set up a layer 2 test. So I'm going to move across, and you'll see here I have layer 2 traffic. I'm then going to click on port 1 terminate. And what you'll notice is port 1 terminate is actually grayed out, and that's grayed out because I already have it in the background. So I can actually just click on close and close once again, and you'll see that I'm now in a 1 giggy layer 2 traffic test, which you can see in the top left hand corner in the red tab. What you'll notice straight off the bat is that the screen is red. So our results screen is red. And also to the left hand side, you can see that we don't have a signal present or sync. Now that's because we have not got our laser turned on. So if I move down to the middle here at the bottom, you'll see there is a laser tab and a button called laser off. That's telling us that the laser is now currently off. Let's click on the laser on button. You'll now see that the button has changed to indicate that the laser is now on. Over here on the left hand side, we can see that our signal is present, our sync is acquired, and link is also active. And if you want to look at your DB levels, you can see them here. The screen is still red because this is a historical alarm screen. So to clear these stats, we need to move over to the right hand side here, and you'll see that the second key from the top is restart. If we click on restart, this will now clear my stats and get me to the yellow screen, which indicates that we now have sync and link. This screen will only go green once we start to receive test traffic. The next step is we need to configure a destination MAC address. To do that, let's click on the Setup button. Once we click on the Setup button, you'll see that the first tab we're in is Interface. And within that, we can see information on our connector. In this case, it is an SFP. You can also move to Physical Layer, where you can either enable or disable auto negotiation. For today's test, we're going to leave auto negotiation enabled. To configure our address, let's move to the left hand side here and click on Ethernet. Once we click on Ethernet, you are now presented with an Ethernet frame. You'll see here that the first option is to add a VLAN. So if you want to add a VLAN, you want to click on the drop down box next to encapsulation and select VLAN. You've also got the option for Q and Q, stacked VLAN and VPLS. So if I was to add a VLAN to this circuit, I would click on VLAN, and you'll now see in this frame here, we have a VLAN box. And if I needed to configure the ID, I can click on VLAN, and then configure the ID and priority as required. For today's demonstration, I'm going to remove the VLAN and just have a plain layer 2 circuit. I will now click on None next to encapsulation, and you'll now see that our frame type does not have a VLAN in it. The next option under encapsulation is frame type. 
there are two types here, DIX and 802.3. DIX is the current standard for Ethernet, so you'd want to select that. So by default, make sure you're always testing with DIX. Frame size, which we can see here. Right now, the frame size is set to 256. If you want to modify the frame size, we can do that quite easily. You can see here, you have the option of 64, 128, all the way down to 1518. If there is a frame size within this view that is not listed, you can click on User Defined and then enter a particular frame size over here. You've also got the option for randomizing the packets. A jumbo packet, which is greater than 1518 in size and up to 10,000 bytes in size. And also eMix, which is a mix of these packet sizes above here. So today, let's go with 512. The next thing you need to look at is SA, which is the source address. If I click on SA, this then details the source address of this test set. And you can see here, under default MAC, it is listed out as 0080-1692-13 alpha 4. But in order to run a test, we have to generate our traffic and generate it to another test set. So we need to configure our destination MAC address as the address of the other test set. To do that, let's click on the DA box, which stands for destination address. Once we click on the DA box, you can see we've got the option to configure our destination MAC address. So in this box here, you would enter the MAC address of the test set you want to generate traffic to. Once you've entered in the MAC address, just click OK. And now, whenever we generate traffic, its destination MAC address is going to be that in this box here. The next thing we need to configure is our CIR. So to configure the throughput that we're going to generate, or CIR, we're going to click on the traffic button here on the left-hand side. So we'll click on traffic. The first thing you'll see is that you can choose a certain load type. The different load types you can select are constant, burst, and ramp. For today's test, let's choose constant. You'll then see that our load unit is going to be configured in bit rate. Our bit rate is going to be in megabits per second. And down here, you can see our load can be configured. And the layer at which we configure the load can be at either layer 1 or layer 2. Generally, you're always going to specify the load of your test at a layer 1 parameter. So let's change the layer to layer 1 and enter in the load that we want to generate. So for today's test, let's choose 100 meg. So we will just clear out this entry and enter in 100. So now, when I start to generate traffic, it's going to be generated at 100 meg. So now let's click on the results button on the top right hand corner here, and that will then bring us back to the results screen. To start this test, the first thing we need to do is move down to the bottom middle here, click on the Actions tab. Once we've clicked on the Actions tab, we can then send the loop command to the far end test set to put it into local loopback. To do that, we can click on the Loop Up button. When I click on the Loop Up button, it is now going to put the second port in the loop. What I have today is an actual fiber loop on the far end, so I don't require a loop up command because that fiber already has the circuit in loopback. To run the test, I'm going to click on Start Traffic, and this is now going to generate test traffic. You'll now see that our summary status screen is green, indicating all summary results OK, which indicates that we are now receiving our test traffic back to the originating ports. You'll also notice over the left hand side here, there are two LEDs, one being frame detect and the other 
standing for ATP detect, which is actuator test packet. This indicates that we're receiving frames, and by having a green LED next to ATP, this indicates that we're receiving actuator test traffic, which is the name we give to the test payload in the T-Bird product line. So we are we are definitely receiving traffic. If we move over to summary SLA KPI, you can see our receive and transmit throughput. You can also see our frame loss, round trip delay, and packet jitter. There are many other screens that you can look through in results. For example, we can look at Ethernet, our layer 2 link stats, BERT stats, and error stats. But I generally recommend that the best view is summary SLA KPI because we get a snapshot of all the key testing criteria in Ethernet testing. Now to stop generating traffic, you can click on the traffic started button on the bottom left here and that will now cease the transmission of traffic. That brings us to the end of our session on setting up a layer 2 Ethernet test. We will also be proceeding to an RFC 2544 test configuration, which you can view separately.